Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Greg, pastor here at Redeemer in Fircrest, Washington. And then, uh, so welcome to everyone who's here in our, our sanctuary, everyone who's uh, joining us uh, by, through a live feed or f through a recording. This is, the, this is um, I guess it's the first Sunday after Epiphany, and we celebrate the baptism of Christ on this day. Um, and uh, today I would also ask that we keep in mind and keep in our prayers, of course, the, the things that have happened on our state capitol, and we continue to ask God for peace, for a peaceful trans transition of power as we come closer to that, but also peace for our governors and, and uh, those who are lawmakers, as well as those who, uh, those who enforce the law. We ask God to protect them, so keep them in your prayers as we uh, continue the service today. We begin uh, with this uh, by preparing our hearts and minds for worship through this prelude of music.
O Christ, by your epiphany, light has shone on us to assure us the fullness of salvation. Grant your light to all we shall encounter today. Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, you humbled yourself and received baptism at your servants' hands, showing us the way of humility. Grant us to humbly serve all the days of our life. Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, by your baptism, you washed away every impurity, making us children of the Father. Grant the grace of adoption as God's children to all who are searching for him. Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, by your baptism, you sanctified the creation and opened the way of repentance and new life to all who are baptized. May we be instruments of your gospel in the world. Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, made manifest as the true light of God, gladden our hearts on the joyful morning of your glory. Call us by our name on the great day of your coming and give us grace to offer unending praise with all the hosts of heaven to the Father in whom all things find their ending, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, you revealed the incarnation of your Son by the brilliant shining of a star. Shine the light of your justice always in our hearts and over all lands, and accept our lives as we treasure, as we treasure, we offer you your praise and for your service through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty
Our first reading for today, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless void and darkness covered the waters and the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand in honor of Christ and his ministry among us. The Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by John in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Well, in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I think that Mark may be my favorite gospel writer. There's no backstory with him. Mark, Mark didn't feel the need to talk about angels or shepherds or magi or, or any pre-existence before all time. Mark had a story to tell, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and he got right into it. They were over 30 years old when John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness. And then in the original Greek, Jesus from Nazareth also appeared, almost from nowhere it seems, on the banks of the River Jordan to be baptized by John. Mark's favorite word, the word he used the most in his gospel, was the word and. And. And he started nearly every sentence with it. And his second favorite word was immediately. It's just like when someone is telling you how things happened, and they can hardly take a breath, and then this happened, and right after that, and immediately, because for Mark, God was on the move. God was on the move when Jesus started his ministry, and again, when Mark was spreading his gospel, the good news throughout the Mediterranean world that God was on the loose. And again, when Jesus came up out of the, the, the Jordan waters, Mark wrote that the, the sky didn't just open. That's what the other gospel writer says, the skies opened. But for Mark, he says the, 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 that it tore open. Schism is the word that we get from it, schism. God was so excited for this moment to lay claim on his beloved son and get the salvation story going. It, it, I, it was kind of like watching little Anantika tear open his Christmas presents. And that's what God was doing. This is my son. This is my son in whom I delight. It's like God could hardly wait. In fact, in Mark's gospel, the spirit 
the Spirit doesn't just alight upon Jesus as a dove, but, but Mark says that, that the Spirit came down and landed into Jesus, <laughs> in, infused into him and became a part of him. And it wasn't, it wasn't just about Jesus. God's excitement to claim and love us Jesus gave us his baptism, the Christian baptism. He gave it to us. John's baptism was about repentance and, and, and walking a, a new and different path, and that was great. But Jesus' baptism, the Christian baptism, is about God's claim on us. It's God's love and excitement for us. And when does that spirit begin to have an effect on us? immediately. As soon as we are born and reborn, infant through 90 years and 100 years old, infused in us and throughout our lives, into our lives, in, into our chaos, before we can hardly turn around. If your last year felt a bit chaotic or upturned, then I promise you that God's Spirit was busy in it when we might even feel like he's absent, that is sometimes when he's at his hardest work. In the creation story, in the creation story, we always say, in the beginning. But, but it literally says something like, when God started making things. It's kind of like God had been planning and planning maybe for eons, waiting and waiting in the swirling chaos, and suddenly, when he just couldn't wait another million years, pow, let there be light and land, life and people. Now, personally, from, from our human perspective, I, th I think it may have taken a very long time, but from God's view, finally, and yes, and immediately, until now until even now. And, and I know it feels, it is as exactly as if the chaos is still swirling around us. But maybe that's because now, even now, God is not done. Not done creating, not done saving, not done with history, his story. The chaos still swirls in Washington, D.C., and Capitol buildings and around governor's houses. In oceans and faraway planets, God is on the loose and not done, not yet. Creations and beauty and art we've yet to see, healing and compassion and love yet to experience. We still don't know the height and depth and width of his mercy and grace. Out of chaos comes learning and better character, renewal. Yes, there are thugs, but there are also heroes and God and truth and reconciliation and forgiveness. We are not so divided that we cannot find these things. People look at the goings-on and they say, well, the end, the end must be near. I say, yes, the end is near. Heaven is at hand, but so is the beginning. We are children of God. This is a new beginning. So let's start again. In Jesus' name, amen.
Together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, that God inspire all people to use their strength wisely. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our for the sick, and for those who provide medical care for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer, especially Dee, Robert, Dixie, Tom, Kari, Ron, Shay, Bonnie, Pat, Karen, John, Avery, and Ellen, all for healing. For Dee's friend Jim, who is struggling with COVID, Christine's daughters and grandson, and for Randy, who is in the hospital. That God shower compassion, Lord, in your mercy. For Redeemer Lutheran Church gathered here, for students returning to school, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace. Lord, in your mercy. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their labors, that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people spoken or silent for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The, the peace of the Lord be with you all. We take a moment to extend Christ's peace to those who are gathered around with us, uh, those who are in our neighborhoods, out into the world, we ask that Christ, that your peace will reign. We ask that um, where we, uh, we are uh, warful and angry, Lord, you can teach us how to unclench our fists, to offer hands of, of love and forgiveness, or at least fist bumps. We pray this in your name. Amen. We, uh, we also ask for our offerings, that you support the ministry. If you um, have your own home congregation you're watching, please support their ministry. If you're a member of Redeemer, you can send in your offerings. There is 
also an offering plate out in our narthex. But it's not just about money, we offer ourselves, and that's the whole point of offering, is responding back to God, telling him and giving response to him and, and to his love for us. And so we do that in this moment through this offering of music. Thank you, thank you uh, to Christina and to Laura for leading us in music, um, to David for reading for us, Dave at the Audio Tech and, and Diana as our, our liturgist. Um, also wanted to thank all of those that showed up and, to help uh, uh, put away our Christmas decorations yesterday. It was uh, done quickly and, and efficiently with all the help and the hands that came to do that, so thank you for that. There are uh, Sunday school or story keeper kits available in our narthex, and uh, so we encourage anyone who has young children, I believe they're from toddlers all the way up through sixth grade, there are kits available, and um, if you for some reason can't get to the church to pick one up, let us know. We will get a kit out to you. Uh, that will help throughout the month. There's activities um, and other ways that they can interact as well. We are in the season of Epiphany. That means that Ash Wednesday is coming. At, holy cow. <laughs> I feel like some, I was teasing Diana saying maybe we should start planning for Christmas next week when we start um, gathering again. But um, Ash Wednesday is coming up next month, and we are making plans for that. I do ask that we continue to pray for our country, as I mentioned before, and, uh, and uh, pray for our, our president-elect as well as uh, uh, President Trump as he leaves office. Will you please receive this blessing? My friends, be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord with Christ's light. Thanks be to God.